In this video, I'm going to show you how to tune your drum heads and find the right pitches and the right ratio between the top and the bottom heads. So a couple months ago, I was playing snare drum on this opera Salome by Strauss. And I was playing my snare drum. It was tuned to my normal place, B on top, F on bottom. It sounded fine, but there was something about it that sounded a little bit choked. So after the show, I brought it into the percussion room and I made one adjustment to it. I brought the top head down a quarter turn all the way around. Then a few days later, I re-optimized the snares and I played the show. It was basically almost the same pitches on top and bottom, just a little bit different, but the sound of the drum completely changed. My colleague Greg Zuber came up to me after the show and he said, Rob, your drum sounded more open. It sounded like it was fuller. And I agree, it was resonating, it was singing, it sounded like it was a snare drum letting itself be a snare drum rather than choking itself. And all it was was a tiny quarter turn change on top. It's not like I tuned it to different pitches, it was still essentially B and F. It's just that that one quarter turn completely changed the way that the drum heads were interacting with each other and therefore how it was sounding. So what pitches should you tune your drum to? Well, my 4x14, I tuned to a B on top and an F on bottom. Look. B and F is a big place. You can make a change and it still will essentially be B and F, but you have to be willing to dive head first down a rabbit hole of experimenting and listening and making adjustments for your drum. But don't worry, I'm gonna show you how to go in and do that. So the process is one part artistic and one part scientific. And the artistic part is the fun part. It's where you're using your ears and you're listening to the sound of the drum. Basically, you're gonna go through a series of adjustments and each time you're gonna to listen to the drum and how it sounds and decide if it's better than before you made the most recent change. You're listening for things like how the drum rings, how do the snares react? Is the drum gonna sound like you need it to for whatever kind of music you're playing? Are you playing Delacluse or Shostakovich? Do you need a fatter sound or do you need a more compact, tighter sound? The scientific part is more procedural. You're setting up a system that you can go through over and over in order to inch closer to a better sounding drum. It's basically a series of steps that you go through repetitively, making one adjustment after the next after the next until you can't make a positive adjustment anymore. So here's the six step process. Step one is to get a tuning chart. You can download mine at robnopper.com slash tuning guide or you can make one yourself. You're gonna use this chart in order to record information as you go for the purpose of making that all important decision which is what turn are you gonna make next time that you think will make the drum sound better? Along the left side is what number turn you're making, and along the top is all of the information that you're gonna record every single time. Step two is to check the pitches of the drum heads right now. So turn the snares off, lay your finger on the bottom head, and tap the top head, and then try to find on a piano exactly where the pitch is. And do the same by muffling the top head with your finger and tapping the bottom head. Step three is to optimize the snares. The snares are gonna have to be at a different tension based on how tight the heads are. If you wanna know how to do this, go back and watch the last video I put out about how to optimize the snare wires. Step four is to write down how the drum sounds. What is the snare response like? What do the drum heads sound like? Are they singing? Is it tight? Is it loose? Does it seem like there's enough bounce on the top head? This is the artistic part, so you're gonna use musical terms and adjectives. Step five is to decide on what turn to make next. At this point, you haven't made any turns yet, but you might think that, okay, you know the drum has to be tighter in some way. You can choose either the top or bottom head. It doesn't really matter. You're just trying something because you can undo it later and try the other one. At this point in my life, sometimes I can predict which turn to make in order to make the drum sound better, but a lot of the time I'm still guessing, which makes it that much more important to have a system in place to keep track of what you're doing. So step six is to make the turn and to write down what you did. And the same rules apply here as when we were putting on a new snare drum head. You want to tune the lugs up evenly and in that star pattern. And if you're loosening them, you want to loosen them farther than they have to go and then back into position. And usually you're just going to be making quarter turns here unless you know that you can take a shortcut and skip one. But I don't recommend it at least to start off with. So write down what you just did and write down how far away from the original position that you are. 
say you brought the top head up a quarter turn, and that's the seventh quarter turn that you've brought the top head up to. So you could say 0.25 is what you just did, and seven quarter turns means that you've made 1.75 total revolutions. So then go back to step two, which is to check the pitches of the drum at its new tension and go through the process of re-optimizing the snares and listening again and making the adjustment again. The next time you get to step five, which is when you decide on what turn to make next, there's a few more considerations. If the snare drum sounds worse than it did before, then just undo that turn and choose a new direction to go. The reason you're keeping track of the total revolutions you've made since you started tuning the drum is so you don't repeat the same tensions because you already know how that sounded. If you've gotten the drum to the point where it sounds really good, you're not done until you've tested all four directions from that position. All four directions need to sound worse than it does right now, and my disclaimer is this might take a while. But once you get to that point, damn, your snare drum sounds great. Cool, you're done. So you can download that tuning chart and also a full checklist for how to put on a new head, how to optimize your snares, and how to tune your drum heads at robnopper.com slash tuning guide. And that concludes my four part series on how to tune your drum to make it sound awesome. Thanks so much for watching. Make sure to subscribe to my YouTube channel because more stuff like this is coming out soon.